I'm just looking for some prayer requests here. And then I want to talk about something just, I know it's going to be, it's, I promise it's going to sound, uh, um, it's going to sound silly. Um, but, again, we talked about Yellowstone, right? Okay. So Yellowstone, there's a character by the name of, of uh, Teeter. And Teeter, well, she lives on the ranch, the Yellowstone Ranch. She lives in the bunkhouse with all the with all the guys she uh she's a texan and she has like the worst accent i think i've ever heard ever and i don't mean worse like she doesn't do a good texan the actress doesn't do a good texan accent she does but her speech is so messed up uh she has such a thick accent you can't understand a word she says and they actually you know they obviously they use that they use that in their in their writing uh and in in their acting anyway um she is not, you know, the girlfriend of one of these cowboys. She is a cowboy. Now, on this ranch, they they do this thing that at, at some point, um, at some point, they offer the hands a brand, and what I mean is, you know, a cow brand. You put it in the fire. And, and they they wear that brand proudly on their on their chest on their on their left chest if they're willing and and if you accept the brand it means that you are true to Yellowstone that they are your they have all your loyalty Yellowstone above all and Yellowstone the ranch you are family You'll be treated like family. In our Bible study on uh, on Sunday nights, we often end up talking about um, we often end up talking about how how in the Old Testament uh, landowners actually operated. And and I think Myron, a friend of ours from the Bible study, might actually say, "Well, this is this is exactly what I'm talking about in the Old Testament because in the Old Testament, when you work for somebody, your family, um, your well being." It matters to them. It's not just you come, you get your paycheck, you go away. When you're, when you work for somebody, you are family. Uh, anyhow, when I watch this scene, I watch this scene where Teeter gets the she get she accepts the brand she, and she commits herself to Yellowstone. And as I said, Yellowstone commits themselves to her. Well, later on, there's there's a fight in the bunkhouse between two girls, two women. And uh, the owner of the ranch says, that's it. Everybody's gone. Oh, no more women in the bunkhouse. No exceptions. And Teeter says, what about me? No, you got to go. And she's, she's broken up over this. And so she confronts John. I think it's John and Rip, uh, the right-hand man. John's the owner. Rip's the right-hand man. And she confronts him and she says, you know, nobody works harder than me. I'm the first one at work and I'm the last one to leave. Nobody works harder than me. Oh, she says, isn't that true? And Rip says, yeah, no, that's that's true, boss. And he says, no, nope, I'm afraid, afraid not. John says, I'm afraid not. I've made my decision. It's final. And she shows him the brand. She said, I thought this meant something. I thought this meant forever. She says, you know, I'm I'm scarred for life. This was supposed to mean forever. Does this, when she uses other words, lots of four-letter words, this doesn't mean anything to you? Now, John didn't know that she had received the brand. Rip didn't have a chance to tell him. But John John changes his mind. He says, all right. And, uh, and she's allowed back in the bunkhouse. But here's the thing. Here's what it made me think about when I was watching that. I was, I was thinking, of, you know, biblical worldview and all that. I was thinking about being a Christian and what it means to be a Christian. When we, when I baptize somebody, you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then we take oil, and on their foreheads, we mark them with the sign of the cross as a reminder that you are Christ's own forever. You belong to Christ. You're committed to Christ. You've given your life to Christ. 
And Christ, in return, promises you the rewards of heaven. You commit yourself to walking his way, and in return, you get those promised rewards. It's kind of similar. It's kind of similar. This being a Christian thing isn't something you do on the side. It's, it's something, it becomes, it becomes your gig. It's not a side hustle. It's the thing you do. Everything else is a side hustle. Uh, you give up everything. All the ways that you used to think, gone. All the things that you used to believe, gone. Everything, it's got to go. And you got to relearn it. Some of it will come back. Like those good, wonderful teachings will, will come back. And you'll go, oh yeah, that's always been. Okay, great. And, and some of it won't. Some of it will just have to go. You start living your life for the people around you as opposed to living your life for yourself. You start living your life for, for your bunk mates, for the ranch hands, for the other cowboys, not just, not just for yourself. The community becomes the thing that matters. Your neighbors become the thing that matters. There's no more labels. When you become a Christian, there ain't no more labels. Paul tells us in Galatians, male, female, slave, free. None of that exists anymore. There's no men. There's no women. There's no gay. There's no straight. There's no color. No language. No, no country of origin. No society or culture. All of it's gone. You now belong to Christ. All that other stuff. All that other stuff is, you let go of it. And when we're able to do this, when we're able to live this life, we're able to transcend, transcend this world. We're able to, to rise above it all. We're able to experience perfect liberation. You know, earlier, somebody in the comments said, was it? No, it was, sorry, in, a, in another video I did, the, the other video I released today, they said, um, yeah, uh, no wonder the cr church is failing in the world. Christians are, are, are arguing about who's right when it comes to this particular political situation. I'm paraphrasing the comment. I apologize if you sent it. And uh, like, you know, you're right. You're right. None of that is theological. None of that is, is of, of, none of that is, is, is about how we're supposed to live in this world. We are, we are, we've, we're off the ranch and we're tangled up in things we got no business being tangled up in. And with people we got no business being tangled up with. We got no right telling people how to live. And here we are, we're doing it. And so what do we see? We see disagreement and we see disunity. No business being out there. But we are because there's an attachment we have that we haven't been able to let go of yet. And so we're not able to experience that perfect liberation and the perfect peace and the perfect calm that 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 that, that Jesus that Jesus is prompt that Jesus promises. But in all this, you know, I talked about all the stuff that we give up. We become something so much greater as well, right? We become something, something beyond. We, be, we, we, we find ourselves above, and I don't mean from a, a superiority, in a superiority kind of way when I say this, but we, we find ourselves above the world. Again, not looking down on it, but doesn't capture us, captivate us, enslave us the way it once did. It matters because we're supposed to love it. It matters because we're supposed to love people. It matters because it matters to God. But we're not attached to it. We're able to, we're able to go without. Anyhow. It was, you know, I, I watched that clip and, and I laughed because she's a really great character. 
She is a really great character, and the actress who plays her is a really amazing actor. She, there's, there's nothing I, I like. I just like what I saw. It was amazing. But it reminded me of it reminded me of of our call that we give up ourselves for Christ to follow Christ. We we give up ourselves to seek God. And maybe you know if I were to go back and answer that comment and the person said, "Well, this is the reason why western Christianity is collapsing." I think I think my argument would be that's not why it's collapsing. The reason it's collapsing is because we, as much as we may say, all for Jesus, we don't mean it. As much as we might, you know, profess to be to have given up ourselves to God, that Jesus is Lord, we don't actually believe it. He's... He's a nice little addition to our life. His call is a nice little suggestion for our life. His ways are nice little opinions, possibilities. And perhaps that's why so many people are so frustrated with Christianity too. Is because when they look at, at us, and, and please understand, I mean the church universal as a whole when they look at the church universal as a whole they don't see a people who have surrendered to love and charity and compassion and forgiveness and mercy and forbearance and gentleness they don't see a people who who are committed to carrying one another's burdens. They don't see a people who are committed to feeding, clothing, and sheltering those who go without. They don't see a people. They don't see a people who are committed to being peacemakers in the world. Just something to think about. But again, for me, watching that clip and maybe it's the Lent, Lenten season as well. But for me, watching that clip, it just made me want to recommit myself. Reevaluate the commitments that I've made and let go of the things that I can and let go of the things that I should. And embrace, embrace more of the life that Jesus is calling us to. Amen.